with Storytellers 3. We all had different, you know, Sonny liked country and he liked blues, and I was the same way. I would listen to the blues, and I think you, you put the, all of it together is where our music came from. Well, what I want to know is, the kind, whenever y'all started out rock and roll was in its infancy, did y'all's parents think y'all were had lost your minds or something when you started playing that kind of music, or did they kind of go along with it, or did they think you were stepping out of bounds, or? Well, mine my, didn't. My no. family supported me. Yeah, mine yeah. did too. Of course, I, I spent a lot of time in that cotton patch, so I needed to do something <laughs> better. <laughs> Yeah. Keep you out of cotton beds. Huh? I picked enough cotton that I knew I didn't want to do it when I got to grow with yeah. it. That way, it's great for your career, you know. <laughs> you didn't want to make a career out of picking cotton. No, 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 no. I picked enough that I knew it. Uh, I want to do better when I got to grow. Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go back to college. It was either music or go to school. I didn't want to go to school. Well, with the resistance in the early days of rock and roll, you know, and people not wanting to play it and stuff, and like I'm talking DJs and stuff, what made y'all decide to go that way with your music and rockabilly? And I mean, you're kind of going against the grain a little bit. Say something to it, Jeff. Money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's true. Back during those days, you had a lot of different types of music that were coming together from different areas. You had, I was already doing the big band stuff, and then hit the nightclubs, and uh, when I got to the nightclubs, well, they were playing, it was, there was mostly country bands playing the new rockabilly and uh, what have you, and so uh, this was new for me uh, at that time, and that was back in the early 50s. Well, you know, guys like Joe Turner uh, uh, influenced Sonny and I, I remember the song, the Honey Hush, we did, yeah. we were doing that thing way back there in the 50s, a great tune, still a good song today. Well, Sonny, this next question is for you. Uh, Frank Sinatra has a song called I Did It My Way, or Called My Way. And uh, would you say that's the way you did your music? It, you did it the way Sonny Burgess wanted it done? Yeah, I think we did, yeah. Uh, we just felt, you know, we played what it felt like. You know, if it felt good, you no, know, we can keep going. If it didn't, why well, we'd cut into something else. But uh, rhythm and blues are the black bands there. We're playing the great dance music. Country music was primarily singers, and if you were doing waltzes and square dances, and I did a lot of square dancing with my uncles. Well, go back and tell me a little bit about why maybe, and, and when and why that, that Sam Phillips changed the name of your band. No, we did that. Oh, y'all did that? I did that, no, I did that. There's a story behind that in, uh, a company in England put out a bunch of vinyl albums when I went over in 84. And uh, they had the vinyl album, the legendary Billy Lee Riley, the legendary Warren Smith, legendary Carl Perkins. So anyway, I get, they gave me all those albums. And when we put the Pacers back together in 96, well, I got to thinking, you know, I'd be a at first, I thought about world famous. You remember we did yeah. that, just both yeah. with that. Yeah. I said, no, legendary sounds better. But it's simply taken off of that records, those vinyl albums that better they to, out in Europe. Better to say legendary than it does say old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just the Pacers, you know. Yeah. 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 I'm sure you've been asked a lot of times down through the years if you uh, ever played with Elvis. But my question to you is, did Elvis ever play with you? Yes, he did. Bob King, 1955 at Swifton, Arkansas, December. When we opened for him and Johnny Cash at Bob, they played uh, Cash and Elvis played the Swifton High School. And as they got through, Cash came down to, to Bob King's and we opened up. You know, we started things off there at Bob's. And when he got, we did an hour, then Cash shows up, does his show, and by that time, Elvis has showed up, so Elvis does his show. Then we go back up and we start playing again. Cash told Bob Neal, and I was standing right beside Bob Neal when they told him, said, we're going to go back to Memphis. So these folks don't want to hear us, and which they didn't. It was simply one of those things that they simply wanted to hear Elvis. Anyway, we're rocking along pretty. We had a great group that night. We had me and Kern, Russ Smith, who later went with Jerry Lee Lewis, 
that John Ray Hubbard, who just died, play an upright bass, and uh, Punky Caldwell from Searcy played sax, yeah, played saxophone and clarinet. Clarinet was a little different back then too. And myself, and we were up there and we were getting with it pretty good. So the next thing I know, I felt two arms come around me. <laughs> Scotty Moore's come back up on the stage and we're both playing the same guitar. <laughs> you can do that, actually, actually do that. One does the chords and the rhythm and the other one does the picking. But this time, DJ had done come back up and got on stage. Elvis comes back and gets on stage. We had a jam session for one hour. Awesome. We didn't, we didn't leave there about 2 o'clock. Now, nobody, except one guy I've met in all my travels that remembers that, and he was up around Pocahontas. Why they don't, no picture. they got to be pictures and things. But that's when we actually got to play with Elvis. Awesome. It was like awesome. a jam session. So actually, he did play with you because you had the stage at that time. He came <laughs> well, out and played with you. We had the big band. Yes. So in other words, he had four pieces: DJ, Scotty, and Bill. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted that big sound. That's why when he went to Vegas, he had what uh, two background groups singing. Yeah, he had yeah. Ten, ten piece orchestra. Yeah. He played a deal in Memphis. Me and Kern was over there in Johnny Ray, Alice Auditorium with. Uh, Carl Perkins opened for him with blue suede shoes. Carl was really good, too. Then Elvis comes on and does his bit. Then they had uh, Carl Smith and Hank Thompson. They've got 10-piece Western swing bands. You talk about good. Oh, great. Elvis left that stage. He kicked that Martin guitar all the way across that stage. said, I'm never going on stage again with this smaller band. Well, he did not, I don't know. But anyway, he was he was hot because you couldn't get no sound in there. Yes. But Perkins did. For some reason or another, Perkins really sounded good. I never heard Carl Perkins not sound good. <laughs> oh, great. Well, that's true. Yeah. Carl's only off. problem was he kept trying to write his own songs. Carl, if he'd have went ahead with his material, you know, got somebody else to write him songs, like I did when I did... Uh, couple of them for Rounder and one for a high tone record. See, they go out and find these songwriters that write rockabilly or whatever you want to sing. They find these songs for you. That's what Carl should have done. And he had the, he had the means and everything. I don't know why he didn't just. Well, tell me a little bit about how did you get uh, hooked up with Razorback Records and where did Short Squash that's, take That's you Bobby's deal. That's me. Uh, well, we put Razorback Records together because we didn't have a label at the time, and we wanted to put some stuff out. And uh, we started Razorback and, and recorded a bunch of people here in Arkansas on it that, that was wanting to put out records. The Texan, Short Squad Texan, come from, we had a, I had a good friend at, at KWAY, Pat Walsh, and I was sitting in Pat's office one day, and about two days before the Texas Arkansas game, and he said, boy, I wish we had a good song to be playing. Be a good time. I said, well, we can do one, I got an idea. Well, I had heard the song, I'm a Long Tall Texan. And that's where we got the music from. Sure. It was from that. And we changed the words around, recorded it here in Little Rock. A guy that actually worked for Channel 4 had a studio out on Markham. And that's where we recorded it. What would y'all say if you had, if you had to give some advice to some young up sprout coming up? What would you say would be uh, give him some advice as to how to stay in music? My advice was don't be like anybody else except yourself. If you try to be like like a lot of guys, like Jerry Lee and some of the other people, you always come out second. Always be yourself. Try to do your own stuff. I would say that basically in music. You have to be a good businessman. Talent's just one small facet of it. There's so many talented people out there that have never made it, that could, but you have to make a business out of it and treat it that way, and uh, you can last. These days, you have to pretty well, a lot of them stay current. Uh, one so, thing for sure, leave drugs alone. Yeah. No drugs. Business. 
I'll have to get it. I'll have to agree with Kern on that thing there. If you're gonna start out, if you got a young musician nowadays, find you something different. There you are. Don't like Kern said. Don't be somebody else because there's 40 million Jerry Lee Lewis's yeah. and there's 40 million Elvis. Well, they say what 10,000 people in the United States making their living doing Elvis Presley. Yeah. yeah. So it's simply you got to be different. That's how that's how Sam Phillips signed people is. That's right. He had tons of people went through that studio. In fact, uh, Harold Jenkins went through there. He didn't release him because I got enough hiccuppers. He had uh, Marvel Phelps. Yeah, right. You know, Larkin's old boy. You know, he went he went over and cut some stuff, and Sam didn't release it. Now it got released later on. This stuff did in Europe, but that just and Marvel later on. What in '76 was the number one country artist in the world. Right. So I'd say they've got to have their own. Be yourself. You know, be just be something different. But, you know, have a little something, a little edge. You can't be Elvis because he's already here and gone.